Shalom lekulam and welcome back to Sarah's Music. Today we're in windy Tel Aviv. is full of music and before moving on to something classical I wanted to come down here to the beach where every weekend there's traditional Israeli folk dancing going on just behind me. Let's go and have a look. The Israeli Opera's home has been here at the Tel Aviv Performing Arts Center since 1994. I love all the backstage access we get on Sarah's music, and here is no exception. Here backstage at the Israel Opera, the preparations are going on for tonight's opera, Faust by Charles Gounod. There's a lot going on in there. Maestro Dan, shalom. Shalom, hi. <laughs> Thank you for taking a few minutes. It's the calm before the storm here in the picnic. Indeed. You've got to go up there and conduct for four hours. Yeah, but four hours of wonderful French music that sounds like German music. <laughs> <laughs> so what does the audience here in Tel Aviv think of Gounod? What, what do they like to listen to? Well, you don't have a lot of schlagers in this opera. <laughs> I mean, like other Puccini or, or Verdi operas. But the music, I mean, I always call it romantic without apologizing. <laughs> It's just brilliant romantic music, grandiose stage, um, a huge production, and I do think there are some hits. They are not just La Donna Immobile, but there are <laughs> French hits, beautiful orchestral music, not the usual umpa 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 begleitung of, of opera, but beautiful orchestra that plays symphonic music. Um, it's exciting, tons of colors, beautiful melodies, exciting. Show. So when you started your career here, it was a dream for a young, a young musician here to start at the Israeli Opera. What was your first job? Um, I was a singer. I was developing a, a, a baritone, lyric baritone uh, career and did a lot of concerts and lieder and oratorio. And then I started to do small roles here on the stage, actually before the house moved here, um, when we were still in Jaffa, and then started singing roles here until I, they were looking for a chorus master and I had the chutzpah to tell them I will do that gladly because I was enjoying teaching myself, conducting and assisting uh, other conductors. And I said, but I need a bit more. I want to study the profession of conducting by doing. They took the risk and I started conducting from Learning nothing. Learning by doing. Learning by doing, by falling and by doing. Fantastic. Yeah. Gosh, that's a, real, that's a real success story. And then you come back here 10 years later. Your mum must be very proud. Oh, she is very proud. I'm sure of that. So how does the audience here react to four hours of, of four quite hour, heavy music? Quite heavy music with two intermissions. I was, I was a bit scared before I came here because, you know, we Israelis, our patience is very, very, very limited. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> I mean, everything gets shorter and shorter these days. That's the world we live in. But Israelis are, you know, 
their patience is very, very, very limited. But they sit here for four hours. Hardly, hardly I notice people um, leave in the second intermission, and it's exciting. It's, and it means we can still do long operas here. Thank you very much. Thank Toda, you. is Thanks. that right? Yeah, Toda, Bebekesha. and we will see you on the, on the, on monitor, the monitor backstage. Okay, Great. thanks. Thank you. <laughs> So the opera is about to start, and this is the man who has everything under control, Gaddy, stage manager. Everything okay? Everything is fine. Everything's fine? Yeah. You're about to start the show? Yeah, in three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes to go. Israeli mezzo-soprano Nama Goldman is singing the role of Sibel, a young boy in love. So Nama, we're one, in one of my favorite rooms backstage at the opera. We're in the costumes room. All these fantastic dresses. I mean, look at all this. Yeah, look at the colors. Ah, but you don't get to wear any of them. No, <laughs> because I'm going to do a boy tonight. <laughs> but isn't it a cool room, all these wonderful no, It's my dresses. favorite room in the house. It's yeah. just amazing. <laughs> You have no idea what's behind here. But today you've got to go up into hair and makeup. Your beautiful hair disappears. Yes, you put I on have the trousers. I have short hair, almost no makeup. <laughs> Only boyish lines in my face are uh, accented, and that's it. That's the life of a mezzo, though, right? Apparently, <laughs> either Carmen or a boy. So, <laughs> so, how do you become an opera star in Israel? When did you decide you wanted to be an opera singer? How did this all start? How, what is the culture of opera singing? Well, very good question. Uh, well, I started as a pianist ever since, ever since I was five years old. I, I played the piano. Classical music was always in my life. But somewhere around the age of 18, I started singing. And then we all have to do the, the military service here, so it stopped for the military service. You didn't then sing I, in the army? No, I didn't. I did, <laughs> did normal, normal service. Uh, and then I, I came back and I just knew that that was my path. Uh, I that's still quite play late, though, isn't it? Quite late, yeah. I still play the piano, but that's just for me. <laughs> so why, why opera? Where, where did you get this, this small, <laughs> <laughs> the larger than life kind of thing? Um, I think it was because the, the the combination of acting, expressing myself through acting and music, is something that I I've never found in in the piano. And actually, as a pianist, I always had fear of stage. Whereas when I started singing, I discovered I, I didn't have that. So this is actually how I, I, I knew that I was on the right direction. What sort of operas work best here? Well, I think there's a market for, you know, the, the grand bel canto, like the Verdi and Traviata and all of those. But we also have a lot of, you know, Yenufa and stuff like that, which is I, I did, for example, The Turn of the Screw, which is not so, you know, bestseller, let's say like that. But the audience came, actually, and it's quite amazing. So you, tonight, you have to lie under this big ring thing. This is an incredible uh, feat yeah, of... A moving ring. It's, yeah. Yeah. And, and it comes up, it opens like a shell from the floor, and I'm just inside, and I'm singing my aria to the flowers, you know, Siebel is singing to the flowers, Marguerite, and uh, all of that, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful scene. Toy, 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 enjoy the <laughs> Thank you very much, thank you. <laughs> the transformation has begun. <laughs> It's the interval and it's almost the end of Sarah's music for today, but first Nama has to come and get under the ring and sing her aria. Enjoy it, see you next time. Thank you.
about the horn challenge. Indeed. <laughs> this is the Israeli horn challenge, our very first one. But first of all, you can't play with lipstick. Oh, God. <laughs> That's it. So, okay. hand here, yeah. hand in there. Inside. Yeah, take a really big singer's breath and, and blow. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> 